talk about one of the most commonly used IV anesthetics that we use today, propofol. Propofol. So there's a lot to discuss uh, about propofol. We can spend a lot of time and multiple videos discussing it. I'm going to try to keep things simple here and just talk about the basics. So let's start off with what we know. So if you remember the mechanism of action of propofol, it acts on the GABA-A receptor. GABA-A receptor. And what it does is it allows GABA, GABA, it allows GABA to have an increased affinity of binding to its receptor. So propofol binds to an allosteric site, increasing the affinity of GABA to its receptor, resulting in opening of this channel, which allows the negatively charged chloride ions to go intracellularly, resulting in hyper polarization and a decrease in action potential resulting in unconsciousness, controlled unconsciousness. So one of the things to know about propofol is that it exists uh, almost uh, as an oil in room temperature, so it's not water soluble. So we have to add things to propofol in order to make it soluble. A couple of things that we add to it are soybean oil um, and egg lecithin. So egg lecithin. And the reason why I'm bringing this up here, so propofol comprises egg lecithin, and egg lecithin is the yolk of the egg. It's the yellow part of the egg, not the white. The white part of the egg is egg albumin. But because propofol has egg in it, you would think that patients who have egg allergies are not uh, allowed or not able to have uh, propofol because they'll get an allergic reaction. Well, it turns out most of the egg allergies are due to egg albumin or the white part of the egg. So it is still okay to give to give in egg allergies. So that's one thing to note uh, that may come up on standardized test exams, standardized exams. Propofol, because it has these additives, um, has soybean oil, egg, lecithin, as well as other stuff, it causes pain on injection. So it's pretty painful. I'm just going to draw an arrow just because we're talking about some of the substances in the propofol. So pain on injection. And one of the most common ways that you can blunt that pain, um, there are a lot of ways, a lot of things that you can do all work to, in varying degrees. But one of the ways that you can blunt that pain is by administering lidocaine right before you give the propofol into the IV. The other thing about propofol is we're talking about the additives. One of the other additives that propofol has in it is a substance called EDTA. And what that is, is it's an antimicrobial agent. So propofol, is uh, actually harbors or allows the harboring of, um, of bacteria in it. So the recommendation is that you do, do not use if the bottle has opened, uh, if you open the propofol vial or if you drew up the propofol more than, for more than six hours. So use less than six hours. Because if you use it for more than six hours, you could get this, um, you could get these bacteria that are growing in the propofol, and injecting that into a patient would ultimately lead to illness, sepsis, and um, ultimately worse. 
even though there is this EDTA in there, antimicrobial in there, you still take the adequate precautions. Uh, now we'll talk about a little bit more about the pharmacokinetics of propofol. So the dose that you would use to administer an induction dose of propofol is 2 milligrams per kilogram. Its onset is about a minute, one minute. And the good thing or favorable thing about propofol is that it gets rapidly redistributed after a bolus dose, redistribution, anywhere from four to eight minutes, that propofol gets redistributed from the plasma to other parts of the body. And at that point in time, you would probably see, or you could probably see, um, the patient start to move a little bit or wake up or start breathing just because of that initial redistribution causing the elimination of the propofol. And then um, with regards to its metabolism, propofol is metabolized by both the liver and so we'll call it hepatic and extrahepatic uh, uh, means. So I'll draw a picture of the liver. It's going to be an abstract picture of the liver. And then I'll draw my propofol molecule. It's going to be represented by this P. So it is going to get metabolized by the liver through conjugation, which allows it to be water-soluble. So I'll draw a P with a circle on it, and that will allow it to get excreted by, by the kidneys. I'll draw that, and excretion. So another important thing to realize is that although there's hepatic metabolism that happens, there's also hep extra hepatic so I'll just note that here plus extra hepatic metabolism and the reason why I bring this up is because you can still use propofol in patients who have liver dysfunction or kidney dysfunction because of that extra hepatic metabolism so patients with end-stage liver disease cirrhosis you can still use propofol We'll talk about some of the common properties of propofol, where it acts on, what it does. So namely, it has lots of cardiovascular effects. So that's my poor picture of a heart there. What propofol is going to do is it's going to decrease your blood pressure by inhibiting sympathetic uh, vasoconstriction and venoconstriction. It's also going to decrease your preload because it's blunting that sympathetic venoconstriction. And then it also acts on the heart to decrease your contractility. Propofol works at the lungs. So that's my picture of the lung to cause apnea. It decreases your ventilatory drive. It de decreases your tidal volume. And it decreases your response to an elevated carbon dioxide resulting in apnea. And then we're going to talk about propofol's effects on the brain. So this is going to be my picture of a brain. And what propofol does to the brain is that it decreases, because it blunts that sympathetic vasoconstriction, venoconstriction, it, it is going to decrease your cerebral blood flow. It's going to decrease your cerebral perfusion pressure. And it's going to decrease your intracranial pressure. 
So a lot of this stuff that, or a lot of the, the things that propofol does is related to its effect on the vascular system. One thing to note too is that propofol is a pretty good anti-seizure medication because when you hook up an EEG to somebody's brain while using propofol, there you notice that there's some burst suppression pattern on the EEG, and that's how they that's how that's how they figured out that propofol has some anti-seizure effects. And then we're going to conclude with just some special characteristics, just for the sake of time. Special characteristics of propofol, it's a powerful anti-emetic. And one possible explanation of why it's a good anti-emetic is, be is because it decreases serotonin receptors at the chemoreceptive trigger zone in the brain that usually stimulates nausea and vomiting. So that's one of the other important things to know about propofol. It's a pretty good anti-emetic. So lots of information. Let's go over it one more time. Propofol acts by binding to an allosteric site on the GABA, recept GABA A receptor, allowing chloride to increasing the affinity of GABA to its receptor allowing hyperpolarization and unconsciousness. Dosage, two milligrams per kilogram in, on induction. Onset is usually about one minute. That concentration redistributes, so it gets eliminated from the plasma relatively quickly. Uh, some of the properties of propofol, it contains egg yolk or egg yellow or egg lecithin, but it's okay to give in an egg allergy because a lot of the egg allergies are from egg white. It has EDTA, which is an antimicrobial, because um, propofol acts as, uh, acts, acts as a medium for bacterial growth. So be sure to use propofol within six hours of opening your vial. It causes pain on injection, so you use lidocaine to blunt that pain. Propofol is metabolized by conjugation in the liver and excretion in the kidneys, although there's some extra hepatic metabolism involved as well, so you, it's safe to use in liver and kidney dysfunction. Effects on the heart, decrease in blood pressure, decrease in preload and contractility. It causes apnea, and it decreases your cerebral blood flow, ICP and CPP. It's also an anti-seizure medication, um, or can be used as an anti-seizure medication in the operating room. And then it is a pretty strong anti-emetic as well.